the Dark Knight of the Soul. Welcome. Now, I've mentioned the Dark Knight of the Soul a number of times in my vlog. And for some time, I suppose four years, maybe five years, four years certainly, I've been receiving revelations about my life and people who I've met in my life, people I've been in contact with, people I've loved even. And I've also become very reflective on the past. In many ways, this dark night of the soul is a preparation for moving on for a spiritual rebirth. And it's a way to forgive yourself and to start to love yourself once more. So now I am experiencing this rebirth. And I'm doing so by releasing the past, releasing people from the past. But above all, for forgiving myself. Uh, the health crisis in particular has made me very reflective on life, on my life. How my life has been manipulated by others. How I've reacted to that. Uh, that everything which has provided me with meaning has been destroyed. A feeling that my wife, life has been worthless. A collapse of my personal belief system. Uh, but I do need to forgive myself and indeed others. Saint John of the Cross. The dark night of the soul or in Spanish La Noche Obscura del Arma is a poem written by the 16th century Spanish mystic and poet, Saint John of the Cross. Uh, the author himself actually didn't any, give any title to his poem, and he wrote, but he wrote two book-length commentaries, uh, The Ascent of Mount, Mount Carmel, Subadia de, del Monte Camelo, and The Dark Knight, Noche Obscura. Uh, the Dark Knight of the Soul refers to the difficulties of life in general. Sorry, it does not refer to the difficulties of life in general. Although the phrase has understandably been taken to refer to such trials, and I, I'm going to refer to it in that way myself. Uh, the nights which the soul experiences are the necessary purgations on the path to a divine union. The divine union with God, the first purgation is the sensory or sensitive part of the soul and the second of the spiritual paths. Such purgations come, uh, comprise the first stages of the mystical journey, followed by those of illumination and then union with God himself. The first verse of the poem is, in, in an obscure night, fevered with love's anxiety, O oh, hapless, happy plight, I went, none seeing me, from my house where all things be quiet. And now, I, as I say, this has been taken up by many people, including the New Age. Uh, but the dark night of the soul in Roman Catholic spirituality describes a spiritual crisis in the journey towards this union with God that I speak so often about. And it's like that described by St John of the Cross. And as a Sufi, I see it in the same way and therefore I embrace it. In modern mindfulness practices, many authors have named a similar phenomena in meditation as the dark night of the soul. It's often described as a lengthened and intense state of depression. Uh, the dark night of the soul is a stage in personal development where the person undergoes a difficult and significant transformation to a deeper perception of life and their place within it. Uh, this enhanced awareness is accompanied by a painful shedding of previous conceptual frameworks such as identity, relationships, career, habit or belief system that have previously allowed them to construct a meaning of life. In fact, Carl Jung sees it as a part of understanding the shadow self. So we not only spot the manipulation of others, but our own dark side in these relationships. 
It is the beginning of the process of realisation and accepting the self. In fact, we begin to realise that what we believe about others is simply a pro projection of the self. Now, this is something that I've mentioned many times, especially in coming to terms with the black magic my family and I have endured for over 10 years now. So it's really the soul leaving the spirit from the co corrupt body. Uh, this is the reason why truth has become so important to me and something that you'll have heard me talk of so many times. It's a sobering up, but in doing so, we begin to see ourselves as empaths, which I do still believe I am, and those from the past as narcissists. And certainly I still believe that many have been. Uh, but maybe this is important because most people, and certainly empaths, go into themselves, into a hermit-like mode, if you like, during the dark night of the souls. Uh, they only become a little bit more extroverted again once they have been through this process, probably having already detached themselves from many people and beliefs of the past. Those who approach the dark night of the soul as a result of psychedelics can get these re revelations in a, in a flash. And indeed, many revelations to me come in a flash. It can feel like an ego death and a rebirth. Eventually we begin to, sorry, I, I, I've said it can come in a flash, but for others, you know, it, this whole process can take a lifetime. Eventually we begin to integrate our new beliefs within the body. We have truly learned from these experiences and the use of this learning in our future life, which is the process of individualization. As Carl Jung says, the most intense conflicts, if overcome, leave behind a sense of security and calm that is not easily disturbed. As I say, really it occurs in a single night, although my wife, Maddie, experienced much, um, maybe not in a night, but over a process of a few days. Uh, when she lost her mind, uh, she began to speak almost in tongues, but she spoke of all the people we knew and their part in using black magic, which had led her to losing her minds. And it's characterised by these sorts of revelations about the past, particularly how you've been manipulated by others. But as I say, also your reaction to this manipulation. It's often seen as a precursor to rebirth, and that's what me and my wife are experiencing now. <coughs> Even towards a spiritual reawakening which is all too apparent to both of us at this moment in time. Angie. Well, one night, I guess I was, was I eight? I think I was still 18. I was, I was on the cusp of being 90. Uh, but I was at Wigan Casino, um, where I used to go every week. The, the, you know, the, the home of Northern Seoul, if you like. And I met, well, she approached me, a girl called Angie from Gloucester. And we began a romantic relationship which lasted just over one year. And now Angie lived with her mother in a flat in Gloucester, uh, close to Cromwell Street, where the mass murderers Fred and Rosemary West live, lived. Her father had left them and Angie had been brought up by her mother. The mother had clearly struggled and I know suffered from depression. She had a boyfriend in Scotland, uh, but he himself was not so well. Um, although I believe that the mother truly cared for Angie, it was clearly a complicated relationship. Indeed, looking back on it, Angie seemed jealous of, maybe even to a degree resented her mother. Angie left school as soon as she was able to, and she took a job in Cheltenham. Uh, but she jumped at a new opportunity to start a new life with me in Stafford, where I was at university. And now things didn't really work out, and she returned to Gloucester, uh, following her mother's intervention. 
Which does lead me to think that she truly cared about Angie. After Wigan one morning, and this was about a year later, I introduced Angie to some acquaintances from southern England. And she went back with them and, and stayed with them. Um, now, of course, this was before mobile phones existed. And I didn't even have a phone in my bedsit. So, in those days, the only way we communicated was via letter. And all I had was an address for her, knew little more. Um, at university, my best friend was Jeff from the Wirral near Liverpool. Um, although he now lives in New Zealand. Uh, Jeff's father was a chief engineer on a ship which was operated by the British Antarctic Survey. So the father was away for months on end going to the Antarctic and back to England. The ship was docking at Southampton and jo Jeff offered me a lift to where Angie was staying. Now first we went to Southampton to pick up the father and we went around the ship. Now I'd never been on a large ship before. Being the chief engineer he took me into the engine room. And now, I'm not certain if I'm claustrophobic, but I've got to say, walking around the engine room was an unnerving experience. I felt so cramped, and of course, it's full of pipes and machines, some of which are boiling hot and you cannot put your hand on, and yet you've got to sort of manoeuvre around them. I, 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 I found, I, I, well, I, I, at once I realised I couldn't work in an engine room on a ship. Um, now, they had a formal meal, the, the old man, the captain's table. Um, and so we were invited to join them for this last meal aboard the trip. Uh, but I remember the uh, both me and Jeff had long hair at the time. I think both of us had long reddish hair as we used henna. And I remember the officers of the ship looking at us somewhat disapprovingly. Uh, but uh, he dropped, he, he, on the way back I was dropped off to near where Angie was living. It was already night time by then. And I knocked on the door but Angie wasn't at the house. I was told that she, she did live there and she'd be back later. Remember there were no phones at the time. So there I was left wandering around this strange town in southern in England. Worried, worried to death that I was going to have to sleep rough. Checking out hedgerows, thinking, could I sleep here? Could I, could I actually sleep in this hedge? Now, I've never done it before, and I've got to say, I mean, I didn't have a sleeping bag, I didn't have anything. Um, I, I was petrified. I really was petrified. And now, fortunately, Angie did return to the house. Uh, but it was made clear to me that I'd been dumped and she was living with another boy at this house. She hadn't bothered to write to me and tell me this. And as I say, there were no phones at the time. However, I was allowed to sleep on the floor at the house and the next morning I got up early and hitched home. I was not used to long distance hitching, uh, but it was a common practice in those days. And, and I, I got home without any real problems. Obviously, I was somewhat hurt. Uh, but I cannot say that it had a lasting impact on me. It wasn't something I paid much attention to throughout my life. Unlike my next girlfriend after Angie, who, who also dumped me. It sounds like my life is a series of being dumped, but I, I'd say far from it. However, this next girlfriend, uh, her dumping me, and my thoughts of her lasted for some 30 years or so. As I say, I've been thinking of my past, especially my time when I used to go to Wigan Casino every week, which went on for probably six years and, until it was finally closed down. And this includes me thinking about Angie. Uh, now, I don't wish to suggest that Angie is important to my thinking. I'm only telling you about her because of what I'm about to say does illustrate what the Dark Knight of the Soul is all about. And only the other day I realised that he, you know, I'd not given it any thought, but I realised that in some way she 
felt some sort of pressure to leave her home so that her mum could start a new life in Scotland. I very much doubt if her mum had put her any under any pressure, uh, but for sure Angie felt this pressure and what was dominating her thinking, including her moving to Stafford and then in with this other boy. Now I'm not suggesting that she was a narcissist, even though so many people that I have these revelations about I write off as narcissists. But she saw in me an empath, maybe, someone who could help her. So she jumped at the chance of moving to Stafford and, and later to Southern England. And now I'm no longer blaming anyone. It simply reflects the dynamics of life. How a person's desire can impact on many people and maybe even unconscious desires can impact on many people and even shape their lives, possibly the rest of their lives. Now we need to work through these events to forgive ourselves and others so that we ourselves can move to this spiritual renewal. Over 30 years ago I met a psychopathic covert narcissist, narcissist. Now, despite me sort of going over things and saying, were these people really? I mean, I think she really was. I think she really was. And at first, she love-bombed me, and I was looking for love. I mean, I'm an empath, that's all I live for. And I completely fell for it. And we lived together for over 30 years, despite me being brutally abused. But remember, I was still grieving about this girl who dumped me after Angie. But yes, I'm a resilient sort. I, I put up with it for 20 years when most people wouldn't have put up with it for more than two. We had a child together, or at least that's what she claimed. As the dark night of the soul has suggested to me that he isn't actually mine. Uh, now, round about the time when this all broke up, he became schizophrenic. And I believe he's codependent on her. So she used him to drain me of what little money I hadn't already given to him because, as I say, as, as when, we were, when we were splitting up, um, I left her with as much money as I could, realising that he needed looking after. But she used him to drain me of what was left. And indeed, when I told him that I, I simply couldn't give him any more money, he broke off contact with me altogether. After meeting this woman, I gave up my academic career, as it didn't provide me with the wages or security to bring up the family, or at least that's what I felt at the time. I ended up a successful knowledge-based entrepreneur with a number of small companies, uh, but ultimately the financial crisis, God, 15 years ago was it, put an end to these businesses as they were dependent on government contracts, which ultimately completely disappeared. I took myself off to Southeast Asia to look for new markets, as it seemed the only way to continue to provide for my, what I saw as being my family uh, in the way that I always had. Uh, not that any of this worked, but that's another story. Um, but I did, I have realised so much about the workings of the international economy. But as I say, that's another story. Uh, but in doing so, I met my current wife, Made. I resolved to stay in an abusive relationship until my son went to university. I felt a sense of obligation. Uh, but he deferred his going to university for one year as his behaviour started to become erratic from what we later found to be schizophrenia. Although I, I must say, I always suspected it was. I lived uh, during my master's degree with somebody who later became schizophrenic and I'd witnessed the early stages of schizophrenia and believed I'd seen it in my son. I even took him to the doctor and the doctor told me not to be so silly. Of course, it was very wrong of me to believe that I could control the universe and others in this way. Uh, but I was trying to do what I felt was best for all. Indeed, to a certain degree, me taking myself to Southeast Asia 
rather than looking for another job or pursuing businesses closer to home was really me attempting to get my then partner to take more responsibility for herself so that she got back into earning a living. But I eventually moved to Indonesia. And this is typical of empaths to eventually turn their back on the narcissist forever. And we have no contact at all, which is the best thing to go to. Uh, but I ended up in Indonesia with no job, no business. Uh, but I did have a new family. Now, at the time I moved, the opportunities for Westerners in Indonesia were being savagely curtailed. Indonesia has since then somewhat turned its back on the West and embraced China. Many would argue against that, but a good many Westerners have been forced out of or even deported from Indonesia. Uh, so I'm left in this strange country with no friends, but a very loving Christ, a wife. Uh, with the health crisis, I've not been able to visit the UK for over two and a half years now, where I have a 92-year-old mother. Carl Jung says the more civilised, the more conscious and complicated a man is, the less he's able to follow his instincts. His complicated living conditions and the influence of his environment are so strong that they drown the quiet voice of nature. Opinions, beliefs, theories and collective tendencies appear, appear in its stead and back up all the aberrations of the conscious mind. Deliberate attention should then be given to the unconscious so that the compensation can set to work. Remember, I'd been a very logical person. Some might even say a scientist. So when my family were affected by black magic, it was completely outside my terms of reference, completely outside my belief system. Uh, but slowly I've taken on these paranormal explanations, and hence this channel. Science, scientific education is based on the main statistical truths and abstract knowledge and therefore in parts its unrealistic rational picture of the world in which the individual is merely a marginal phenomenon and plays no roles. Uh, the individual however as an irrational data is the true and authentic carrier of reality the concrete man as opposed to the unreal ideal or normal man to whom the scientific statements refer. Carl Jung yet again. But you can see how my old life has completely disappeared. Yes, the health crisis had made me realise how wasted my life had been. Uh, but I embrace this as a necessary stage in my understanding. I have forgiven those who have harmed me, but also give them up, and indeed myself, to the universe. Or you could see this as karma if you like. Everyone you meet knows something that you don't, but need to know. Learn from them, Carl Jung, once more. It can be seen through the real motivations about events surrounded me, and indeed within the world. Uh, but still I struggle to understand how much I am projecting the self onto my world. <coughs> In fact, I'm never able to make make divinations which are uncannily true. At first these were all negative, but as I'm healing, they're becoming more and more positive once more. However, accepting that I cannot control things is an essential part of this spiritual rebirth. Indeed, the raising of vibration is an essential part to spotting manipulation and setting boundaries. So the dark night of the soul is an essential phase in our spiritual rebirth. I'm not what happened to me, I'm what I choose to become, Kalya. Well, I really hope you've enjoyed this vlog. And if you have, can you help me out a little? Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell and then you'll be notified of future vlogs but also hit the like button and make a comment 
uh, because these seem to be what determine the um, YouTube algorithm and I, I'm being really punished by it. So whatever help I can get from you is, is so appreciated, it really is. I'm, when I started this, I was going to do it, uh, this, this section, the real magic of Java, I was going to issue maybe every two, three months. Now it's, it's happening maybe every two or three days. So yeah, if you hit the bell, you'll hear about it. Um, and thank you so much. Thank you for listening. Really heartfelt thanks.